What's up guys, my name is Josh, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Odyssey Mobius gaming headphone. This is a $400 headphone that is designed by a company that has never really touched into the gaming category before, and they are kind of getting into this group, getting into this category, getting into this type of headphone with a pretty big bang. Now, before we get started, I do know that people are crunched on time sometimes, so if you want to skip to any particular part, you can skip here in the time code to get wherever you want to go, or click one of the links in my pinned comment to skip wherever you want to go if you're interested in one particular part versus the rest. All right, and then two quick things before we get started. Uh, one is that this was uh, sent in by a viewer of mine. Thank you very much, Joe, you kick ass. And two, I'm kind of at a loss of how to review this headphone. There's so many complicated features and I have a very structured way of reviewing headphones and I can't really review this headphone like that because there are so many caveats and we'd literally be here for like an hour and a half if I were to cover every feature the way I normally cover headphones. So I'm gonna do my best to give you a general understanding of what this headphone is like to use, what it sounds like, and whether or not I think it's worth it. And if you take a quick look at Odyssey's website, it's very clear that this is a gaming headphone. In fact, they don't really talk about their reproduction of music or being high fidelity anywhere on their product page for this. They highlight reviews, then they talk about their gaming, then they talk about their movies, and then it's just specifications and features from there. So that's basically how I'm gonna review. I'm gonna talk a little bit about music, but in general, I'm gonna be talking about gaming and movies. So how is it as a gaming headphone, uh, both the head tracking and the DSP settings that it has? Well, honestly, the DSP settings are incredibly versatile and on particular games, they can be very, very useful. And then on other games, not as useful and in some games, even detrimental. A good example of this is the footstep preset. On Battlefield 1, this feature was absolutely amazing and made enemy footsteps very, very forward and you could hear them very, very easily. But on Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which I don't really play that often, but for the testing of this headphone, I did play as many games as I possibly could. It actually reduced the footsteps of the enemy team, increased my footsteps, and I could barely locate enemies and I could barely hear them. And that's on a game that already has pretty emphasized footsteps to begin with and is a little bit more emphasized than what I would consider to be real life. So when it comes to being beneficial for certain games, it's really a spectrum. You have super useful and actually problematic and then kind of a general headphone right in the middle. On certain games, it was really useful. On others, not so much and actually added to its detriment and I would have to put it in a different preset that it wasn't made for to really get positive results from. And a big part of this is that it's taking the DSP settings all internally. It's not adapting to whatever game you're playing. It's not adapting to Windows. It is just taking predetermined presets that uh, alter and add reverb and echo to certain frequencies and things like that to basically give you a really different experience depending on what kind of game you wanna play and what kind of DSP setting you have this under. The other aspect to this, and I'll talk more about this later, is gonna be the head tracking capabilities. And I'm gonna talk about that, but I want that to be in its own segment because I have some pretty strong opinions about that. Okay, so what does this actually sound like with the 3D audio on? Because there's three basic modes. There's 3D audio auto, 3D audio manual, and then 3D audio off. 3D audio off basically takes away all the DSP that makes it seem like it's coming from a three-dimensional sound space. 3D manual is basically you set a center and it keeps the center, whether you put the headphone down, whether you move your headphone around, look up, look sideways, anything like that, it will keep you centered. And then the automatic mode, when you put this headphone on, if you look this way, it takes a second to get re-centered, but it centers wherever you rest your head for about a second or uh, even half a second. Honestly, this setting was a really good speed to be when I wanted to look at something else, it would move over slowly, but if I was just checking something, it would keep the center fairly in this, well, the center. So the way that this sounds to me is like a ring of sound around your head. And it's very obvious, most headphones are really good with left and right sound, right? That's, that's pretty easy to do because, well, there's two drivers, there's a left and a right. This headphone was really, really good at displaying in the 3D audio mode, of course of displaying in front of you and behind you as well. And it kind of felt like a ring of sound. Now this was kind of interesting within the soundstage because the soundstage is wide, but it's not intimate and it's not extremely far. And it doesn't really go beyond that ring of sound that I was talking about. And that to me was 
a little disappointing. I wasn't getting a lot of depth in the soundstage. So directionality of an enemy was very, very easy. And a benefit to this headphone was that forward and backwards directionality. But one problem was having the, all right, he's coming from the right, but exactly how far away is he? Is he two feet away or is he 15 feet away? And with the emphasized sound signature, it didn't really ever have that, that sort of variation in depth and distance that I would really, really look for. Now this sound did again depend on the game, did depend on what kind of frequencies it was adjusting and what preset you had selected. Um, I'm only gonna be talking about a couple presets because going through all seven presets is gonna be kind of a nightmare and I think would take way too long. I don't really think anybody really cares that much. Now regarding the actual soundstage, this is the widest closed back headphone that I've ever tried. Now I haven't tried too many closed back headphones and if you follow this channel, you know that I do a lot of open backs because that's the sound signature that I prefer. But as a closed back headphone, this does sound very, very wide. So if you are in requirement for a wide sounding closed back headphone specifically, and you got 400 bucks and you want some of the additional features that this has, this may be a good option. And then the second category that Odyssey themselves really focused on was movies. And I use my standardized testing movies that I test all my headphones with being Dunkirk and Interstellar, not only for their amazing, amazing soundtracks by Hans Zimmer, but their incredible audio within the movie. Um, and on top of that, you get you know pretty good movies in my opinion. And this does have a very, let's call it cinematic, kind of three-dimensional sound to it. It's got a lot of bass response, it has good directionality, and the head tracking in movies is a fun feature. When it comes to the ultimate cinematic experience, does this replace a pair of good speakers or good surround sound? No. And so if you're going for that ultimate experience, 400 bucks is a pretty big chunk towards a really good surround sound system. And I would, I would save that money and put it towards the speaker system if you were going for that ultimate experience. But, but let's say you have kids who sleep at night and you can't be loud and you can't be like blasting movies at 11 or 12 or one o'clock at night and you don't wanna wake other people up and you watch in the front room or on your laptop or in bed with your wife or something like that, you may be looking for this and this may be a really good compromise for that really cinematic sound experience but also not being blaringly loud with a speaker system. Now, when it comes to movies, it's not all sunshine and daisies, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, voices lack clarity when you have all the DSP settings and all of the, the 3D audio turned on. When you have that cinematic experience, you pretty much are sacrificing detail and clarity pretty much everywhere. And that to me was a little bit disappointing. This 3D experience was really, really beneficial when you're talking about a, a really like high, anticipation scene, a lot of adventure or a lot of action or a lot going on, you know, gunshots, explosions, etc. That sort of stuff, this 3D experience was really, really fun and actually a fair bit immersive despite being so strange of a sound like approach because you're not used to sounds coming at you the way that they come at you with this headphone. However, there's a flip side to this. Um, voices seem really unnatural when you're in a very calm scene. You're getting this weird echo and reverberation that's being added to the sound and it does sound fairly unnatural and really takes you out of that immersive experience. So for certain movies and well, really even more accurately for certain scenes, it's very immersive and for other scenes, not so much. Now I wanna talk about the sound of this with the 3D audio off. So you're just listening to two you know, two channels basically right and left like you are, like usual. But I also wanna talk about it with either the flat or the default profile. Honestly, as a headphone, this sounds pretty good. I don't know if it sounds $400 good, but if I were to give this a good sound or a bad sound, I would lean towards the good sound. Um, it has a great vocal presentation. It's very forward, it's very finite, it's very tight and they do have good presence to the vocals. The bass is very, very deep and goes all the way down to like 30 Hertz without very much roll off from what I can hear. It's very pleasant while not being necessarily overdone. It just does go in classic Odyssey fashion, very, very low without much, you know, breakup or much really bloominess to the bass response until you get into the DSP settings but we're talking about that with them off. Now the treble, if you're talking about music that isn't particularly super refined like you would get with a Daft Punk album, I did find the treble to be a little bit bright and not particularly resolving. And uh, that part was a little bit disappointing. Now, when it comes to the imaging and the soundstage, again, with the 3D off with no DSP settings or on the default DSP settings, the soundstage did seem very natural and it, it had close sounds and it had far sounds. And regarding that depth or that distance factor, the actual 
default sound signature with 3D off was actually a little bit more accurate than any of the DSP settings with the 3D on. So that was kind of an interesting little tidbit there. So my general impressions of how this headphone sounds, I would say that if you're coming from a gaming headphone and you've only ever had gaming headphones like any of the Razer lineup or the Logitech lineup or even some of the Sennheiser gaming headphones, this is going to be a great upgrade in terms of sound quality. But the flip side of that coin, if you're coming from maybe a high fidelity headphone like an HG600 or a 650 or a DT1990 or some other Odyssey headphone, this is really gonna seem kind of like a downgrade. And what you're really gonna be looking for here is the additional features of the head tracking and the DSP settings for gaming. So if you're just gonna be listening to music for the most part, and watching the movie here or there or the game here and there and you're not really designated towards either one of those, I would actually look at possibly other headphones. All right, and now I wanna talk about the 3D head tracking. And this is, um, it's kind of an interesting category that I kind of have somewhat of an issue with and I'm gonna compliment it before I kinda of tear it down. Uh, it does work, it's not a gimmick, it actually functions very, very well. However, my argument against it goes like this. There is very little practical application for the head tracking in this. And here's what I mean. When you're focusing on a game, let's just go with the gaming category, then we'll talk about movies in a second. When you're focusing on a game, you want absolutely every advantage that you can have over your opponent. And the truth about gaming is that your eyes are a significantly more finely tuned instrument than your ears are. That's just the truth. I don't care who disagrees with me. That's that's just how it is. Your eyes are so much more accurate and more responsive to your brain than your ears are. And when you're moving your head around, if you go and like go and read some text, if you have, maybe I'll even t put text on the screen. If you're reading this while you're moving your head back and forth, you can still read it. It is possible, but then keep your head still. It's significantly easier to read that text when you're not moving your head. But your ability to keep your eye on a finite point and be responsive to a finite point is significantly limited when your head is moving around. And so when you're gaming, I think most good players, including myself, are pretty much trained to keep their head perfectly centered and perfectly still so that you're maximizing the performance of what's gonna give you the best benefit and best response time in gaming, your eyes, and then you're just kind of listening and moving your mouse around to change your perspective of not only your visuals, but also your ears. Because by the time you locate a sound and you find out exactly where it's coming from, if you do tilt your head, then you have to move your mouse and it just kind of works better to do it all in one motion and have everything on a static plane and not have your sound over here and your visuals over here. I think it creates more confusion and it causes more problems than it actually solves. Now, one thing I was hoping for personally was the ability to hear verticality and being able to tilt your head maybe and hear maybe an enemy upstairs or downstairs and be able to tell where they're coming from. However, this idea was quickly shot down uh, upon playing and realizing that it's not really in the sound engines themselves to be able to display that information for most games. So that was out the window as well. And so you can really only hear left and right similar to what you can hear on a normal headphone. So when it comes to playing competitively and giving a competitive advantage, I do not think the head tracking is beneficial. When it comes to a fun experience, to a cool and unique experience, being able to like listen and kind of have this extra immersion to the world around you, I do think it is a good thing and I do think it is a fun thing. Now the flip side of me saying that the head tracking doesn't benefit you for competitive gaming, I do think that the DSP settings can benefit you on certain games, you know, depending on, on what their, their audio systems are. But I would leave it on the two channel with the 3D off if you're playing competitively. And it's gonna be fairly accurate and give you a pretty good advantage in my opinion. And with the 3D head tracking off, it also opens up the opportunity for that depth or that distance factor to play a bigger role in hearing where your enemy is. And I think it's more beneficial for a competitive player to do it like that. Now, even when you do have this on the default setting for DSP, if you're watching a movie, if you do have the 3D audio on, it does add reverberation and echo when there really shouldn't be any. And so you do get these unnatural sounding moments um, kind of strung in through some pretty amazing immersive cinematic 
like explosion sequences or action sequences. And so you kind of are like immersed, not immersed, immersed, not immersed, immersed, not immersed throughout the duration of an average movie. So let's talk about the build and some of the features. So the build is very, very solid, but plastic. It doesn't really creak as you can hear or not hear when you're moving it around. So for a plastic build, that is nice. The ear pads are actually amazingly plush and soft and the headband is soft as well but for whatever reason, it's not very comfortable. Now, I don't generally have issues with hot spots anywhere on my head, but with this particular headphone, I was developing an issue right up top. So if you're particularly sensitive up there, you may want to really consider that um, for long listening sessions. Now, that was over the course of like an hour and a half, two hours, or the duration of like an average movie. I was really starting to notice it. But in general, for like 30 minute to an hour sessions, it was just fine, and I didn't really have any comfort issues whatsoever. It does come with a very nicely built microphone, although it does sound really nasally, and I will do an audio test right here. This is gonna be a microphone test. I'm gonna move the microphone slowly away from me and then back to where I think it probably sounds best. Now, one thing I wasn't able to get away from was the noise from breathing into the microphone going like I couldn't really place it in a better or a worse position, just kind of always seems to be a problem. There is some feedback in the headphone, so I can hear myself talk. The good news is it's not delayed. It seems to be shooting from the headphone, not going into Windows, back out from Windows. It, seems, it does seem to be coming from whatever technology they have in here, and it's playing back practically instantly. I can't tell a delay at all. So that's good. Now regarding the cables and the lack of a Bluetooth transmitter, I am a little bit disappointed. It does come with a few cables. They are high quality cables, but they do contain like a lot of bends and they aren't very like pliable and they're not very fun to use and wear to be honest. And I felt it was best to use this when in Bluetooth mode, the problem with Bluetooth mode is that you need a Bluetooth device. And when you're gaming, a lot of desktops don't really have Bluetooth transmitters. So you have to go and buy one because this $400 Bluetooth headphone that is supposed to hook up to Windows computers does not have a Bluetooth dongle. So you're gonna have to go and get one. I'll leave a recommendation down below. But to its benefit, pairing is very easy and you can pair with multiple devices and switching between those devices is also a breeze. Now regarding the features, I was gonna basically lay out literally everything that this can do just all on the headphone itself. But for time's sake, I'll just tell you kind of some of the special ones that I thought were worth noting and then just advise you to go read the manual, which I advise anyways. Uh, to go and do because there's a lot that this headphone can do. So you've got an on off button, which also doubles as a play pause button, uh, the 3D audio button, which you can hit to center your headphone or press and hold to change the mode. You can do 3D auto, 3D manual, and 3D off. The mic scroll wheel can be pressed and scrolled to select one of seven DSP presets, being default, racing, flat, music, RPG, ballistics, and footsteps. Now, ballistics basically just highlights the sounds of bullets and the location of bullets. I recommend footsteps over bullets because bullets are usually already pretty obvious on where they're coming from and obviously are usually louder than everything else around them. Uh, then there's a mode where you can select whether you want two channel, high res audio, or 7.1, and it's, it's virtual 7.1. You really only have two drivers here. This is how most of those 7.1 headphones are. They just use some DSP form to kind of create a, a, a fake three-dimensional or false three-dimensional sound. And there's a couple other cool features that it has and that it can do, and I just recommend checking it out if you are really interested in seeing what it's capable of doing, but I don't feel like highlighting all of them. And I think this is gonna lead me into the conclusion here. This is a fun headphone. It is a unique headphone. It's one of a kind. It's the only one that does what it does, and I think that's really cool, but I question the practical application of some of its features. The DSP settings, although they work great for certain games, don't work super well for others or not at all, or even worse than a general pair of headphones. The head tracking at this moment I think is fun, but I don't think in a competitive space, I don't think it adds anything and I don't think it benefits your gameplay. In fact, just the opposite. And I, I can't say that the head tracking is worth it just yet. It does work, it works great in fact, but the practical application for it is fairly limited. It's not a gimmick because it does work, but I just don't know how useful it would actually be. Also, a real quick side note, uh, and I think I should just mention this, uh, there has been rumors that this uh, head tracking could be applicable to like a macro or something like that, to where you know you could, for example, lean your head left 
or right in a game and your character would lean around a corner or something like that, or even beyond when you're going into video editing or something along those lines. So, so there is a vast amount of potential for the head tracking to have a practical use, but for now that's just talking. I can't necessarily bank on that for sure happening. But at the same time, I do have a reasonable assumption that eventually this technology will progress enough to where that is able to happen. Now the DSP corrections on the other hand are fairly useful and can be a lot of fun and you can use them with Bluetooth mode. And so you can have this really versatile and fun experience where you can easily select between, again, seven different presets for that DSP and have kind of a, a unique experience and maybe even a beneficial experience for competitive gaming or a more immersive experience for movies. Sound quality in general is definitely possible. And if you're coming from kind of lower end headphones, it's gonna be a great upgrade, but possibly a, a step down if you're coming from higher end headphones. Overall, I'm gonna say that this headphone has really great, very, very unique and fun features but I do question its practical application. So if you're interested in just like the technology, having something fun and different, this might be worth putting your money towards. But if you're hoping this is going to make you a significantly better gamer or make movies just like feel like real life, to me, it doesn't really do that. And given the build and no Bluetooth dongle, I think that this kind of fits kind of in the eh category. It's about a six out of 10 in my opinion. It's cool, it's fun, I'm glad the technology is progressing and this is just the first step, but it's just that. It's just kind of a first step. It has some fun features, but it doesn't really do significant things for me. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much again, Joe, for sending this out for review. I had a lot of offers for the Mobius, but he was the first one to get it to me, so thank you for everybody else who offered. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you do support what I do, and, you, and if you wanna see more of my stupid face talking about other headphones and things like that, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But if you're not quite convinced that you want to subscribe yet and you do want to check out some of my other videos before doing that, here's a link to two of my other videos that you can check out. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>